For a long time, I've been drawn to Namibia. Vast desert landscapes, interesting culture, extreme adventures, and going into the unknown. But it was the unknown that grabbed me the most. It was so remote, so foreign, and I had no idea what to expect. When we first landed, we were thrust right into that unknown as we climbed one of the tallest dunes in the country, flew above flamingos, and tore through a rugged coastline where the desert crashes into the ocean. Our first three days in Namibia will transport you to a land we never knew existed. So after about a month or so of just like hanging out in Cape Town, we're about to get our flight to Namibia. So Namibia has been on my bucket list for quite a while now and being in South Africa, it's only about $100 to fly there. So. So we just landed in Namibia. We landed in uh, Walvis Bay and we just saw nothing but sand and desert for miles and miles and miles. As soon as we crossed the border, I didn't see a single house or anything. And landing, I have no idea where the town even is because I just didn't see anything but just uh, golden sand and desert. So excited to be here and see what Namibia has to offer. Alright, so just about five minutes from the airport here, we got to Dune 7, and it's really hot, but I'm going to try to hike up behind this one here a little bit, and Olivia's going to fly the drone, so let's check it out. about 15 minutes I made it to the top of this dune and it is beautiful just surrounded by desert absolute nothingness and this is only about 10 minutes after I got through Namibian customs so if you drive into or fly into Walvis Bay definitely check this out on your way to Swaco and now comes the fun part where I get to run down the dune <laughs> So we just pulled over on the side of the road here because there's a little place in the desert where you can see the flamingos. So you just have to walk through this mud to get to them. All right, so here we are. The flamingos are just behind us. And that's about as close as we're gonna be able to get here. But we're just kind of like in this little marsh in the desert. Um, and it's been cool to kind of see them. Every once in a while they'll flutter and fly in a little circle, but you can't really get too close with the telephoto here.
so it's our first day here in Swakopmund and we've gone out with the hostel crew to uh, this rec restaurant in Pebble Beach here and they're gonna do some surfing lessons and we're just gonna kind of watch the surf. Well, everyone's kind of learning how to surf there. I'm gonna go for just a walk along this beach. I think I see some fishermen way in the distance, so I'll see what they're up to. So I made it to the fishermen and just sat down and chatted with them for a while but it was cool to see them casting the line way out into the ocean and a couple of them brought home some fish. So, Alright, back to see the surfers. Alright guys, so we're back in Swakopmund town and just kind of walking around a little bit and checking out some of the architecture. It has this almost Bavarian German kind of feel to it because it was once occupied by the Germans um, but yeah very random kind of like architecture for what you would picture in the southwest of Africa so I'll show you a little bit of that I'm gonna carry it around to Mithya with me <laughs> All right, so in the edge of town in Swaka, we found this Tiger Reef bar, and it just seems so remote and so like out of the way, but I'm excited to check it out. awesome so right on the other side of Tiger Reef Cafe there's just this kind of like destroyed little jetty thing and the waves are just crashing against it and it made for some awesome photos I'm very excited to edit those all right so we're just walking along the beach a little bit more and there's these like abandoned uh, train track sports here seems like it's from like another civilization all right, so Olivia came out here this morning with some of the girls to do yoga and she saw some wild camels roaming around so we're on a hunt to find some of those wild camels. They're not wild but there are some camels doing some camel rides over there. Well, they're not wild camels, but we found this feeding trough where there's a bunch of camels just eating that are probably used to do like camel rides and stuff, but pretty cool to see a lot of them here and they're just chewing away. Alright, this afternoon we're going in a 4x4 and we're going to go to Sandwich Harbor where the desert meets the ocean. So let's check it out. Alright, so our first stop is here in Walvis Bay, getting some of our food for the trip and uh, getting like a coffee. All right, so we stopped just a little bit further down Walvis Bay because we saw some flamingos here. And meanwhile, our guide is gonna deflate the tires a little bit so we can drive through the desert sand.
All right, on our way to Sandwich Harbor, we found these pink kind of like rivers and salt pans, and it's just really beautiful. So rich, the pink color here. We are just in the middle of like nothingness. It's just sand everywhere. So a couple weeks ago, there were some really big waves that came through and turned a lot of this into mud back there. And there's like three cars that are like really, really stuck in the mud. So I don't think we'll be able to help them, but. All right, so we just deflated our tires a little bit more because we're gonna try to help these guys get unstuck from the mud, but I hope we don't get stuck in the process. It worked, they pulled them out. The day is saved. <laughs> that was hilarious. They just like throttled it backwards and it pulled itself out of that hole. All right, after that little side venture, we're back on our road trip through the desert to Sandwich Harbor. All right, we just stopped again uh, at this little dune spot and there's all these like little lump dunes and then you can kind of see the ocean off in the background. It's really pretty. All right, so our guide just was digging through the sand and found the palmetto gecko which is very sensitive to sun and heat. We just spotted our first oryx and they're out there a little bit far away, but hopefully with the telephoto, we can get a couple shots of them. Behind me is where Sandwich Harbor actually kind of begins, where we start getting some like big dunes right along the ocean. All right, so we've just pulled over on the side of the beach here with the dune behind us and the ocean and we're gonna have a little lunch. All right, so there used to be a research station here and we can see just a little bit of the remnants of some of the wooden buildings, but they quickly learned that building on the sand wasn't a good idea and it got overtook by the ocean.
right, so we just drove up the dunes and it was really fun just like whipping around. And now we're up on top of the sand and we're looking back down on the ocean and some of the previous dunes that we drove through. All right, so I'm gonna hike a little bit further along these dunes to see if I can get like a clean shot of the ocean and the dunes falling into them. So let's see how far I get. made it about as far as I'm gonna go to get a view back at the bay. ripping through the sand on the Namibian roller coaster. We've kind of parked up on one of the higher dunes. We just have like amazing 360 degree views of the dunes around us. This place is just insane for photography. I've been actually using the 70 to 200 almost the whole day because we're just in these like vast wide landscapes and just like the compression that you can get with the dunes on the telephoto is amazing. So pretty stoked to edit some of these photos. scenic overlooks where we're just on this like dune that is right next to the ocean and we just have some nice light and some awesome like ridges looking out there and the waves right below us is beautiful definitely going to get some cool photos here and hopefully we'll fly the drone again because we're right on the ocean here it'll be awesome 